And hi, folks. You're watching and listening to Sipping Off the Cuff on Tequila Aficionado Media on all of our channels and networks. I'm Mike Morales here in the heartbeat of the San Gabriel Valley in Southern California. That guy out there is Eric Zandona in Crestview, Florida. Uh, we have been, we've had a glorious time uh, dissecting this entire line. You probably can't see it now because most of it's on the floor. Uh, of of uh, craft distillers who made this happen. Today, mm -hmm. Eric and I have another one that has been on my radar for a little while. It's called Las Perlas. Mm -hmm. This is another another Ricea from La Costa. Um, and I have had one this year uh, from the, I'm going to say the same region, I'm uh, Ricea de Costa. And mm -hmm. this, this is a Ricea within the denomination of origin and i have had one from la costa this year and I'm, so i'm anxious to see what this one is all about as well um i don't know what we know a lot of the information unlike mezcal this has got a lot of different information on it but right on the label um, yeah yeah on the back side they have it in spanish and in english Mostly Spanish. No, mostly Spanish. Mostly Spanish. <laughs> okay, so the 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 ta taberna, which is what they call their palenque or their distillery, distillery yeah, is called Hacienda El Devisadero. Wow, that's a mouthful. Mm -hmm. uh, mezcal, which is the the type of plant that they refer to mezcal as the plant, which is not uncommon. They're calling it Amarillo y Verde, and it's tw plus over twelve years old. Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, the way they cook it is below ground, orno bajo tierra con leña. So it's below ground with um, uh, with wood for 72 hours. Uh, the molienda is manual and pil uh, piletas y mecánica. So there's a combination of of, uh, of the shredding is done manually. Uh, piletas, I would imagine, is um, maybe with mallets. And then what they don't get, they'll, they'll put through a shredder. Yeah, uh, the fermentation natural with uh, natural uh, yeast, uh, mm -hmm. wild ye yeast, and uh, oh, now this is interesting. The the vat that they're using is uh, tinas de mampostería. That tells me that these are like uh, uh, they're adobe uh, vats, but they're underground. If you're if you've ah, ever seen like yeah, sotol, yeah. so it's yeah. like sotol, which is the same thing. And yeah, so it's yeah. like a big pool underground, mm -hmm. but it's all, it's all, you know, uh, mamposteria, which is uh, adobe. And, uh, but it's open air yeast for 20 days. And the distillation, the first distillation is uh, tipo árabe con acero inoxidable. So it's stainless steel on the first pass. Mm -hmm. The second one is artisanal con caso de cobre y montura de madera. So it's a, it's a, uh, copper on the top, and it's it's wood fed on the bottom with wood. So it's a it's a more of what we're used to seeing, like you mentioned uh, in one of our earlier uh, tastings of uh, Mexicat, how yeah. it's how it's like a like a pizza oven. So yeah. the second the second pass is more artisanal with a copper uh, still on the top, a copper top. And then, and then wood fired uh, oven at the bottom. So mm -hmm. it's interesting. Mm -hmm. This is a combination. It's weird. It's like a combination of um, of uh, artisanal and ancestral. It's a it's a yeah. modern and 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 ancient. Yeah. Uh, and you know, uh, Ricea doesn't have the the actual stipulations or categories like like mezcal does. Yeah. Because. Uh, they they list on the bottle is what lot came from and how many liters were in the lot. So yes. really small batches, six hundred and eighty nine liters for this for this one batch. Yeah, this is lot number four uh, yes. for mine anyway. Yeah, and this was uh, la fecha says abril quince. See? I'm not sure if that's April 2015 or April 15th. I want to say probably 2015. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. So, um, so there we go. The there there are three people uh, responsible for this, but let's let's. Uh, this is made from Rhodocantha, 
and Augustifolia. So it is a, a blend. Mm -hmm. uh, they're using both plants. Okay, let's let's break the seal and taste this puppy and see yeah, what we man. got. We usually we taste it first and then give you the ins and outs, but this is <laughs> this is a each of these riceas is coming from a different you know region with a different hand of the maker and a different style, but well within the denomination of origin of ricea. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to use another stasol jarrito that I normally use for for higher proof for mezcal. And I'm going to pour myself a little. We don't need a whole big sample of this because that's not necessary. Oh, wow. I know. I can, Just as soon as I, we just broke the seal on these. They've yeah. been sitting in my office for days. Um, and and uh. the aroma was instant. Like, you know, mm -hmm. it clears the sinuses, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Again, oh. like something we've talked about before, like the variation in aromas and just really delightful. I mean, this oh. is one of the things that just is so lovely about agave spirits oh. is that the variation is so uh, wonderful. So oh, this, is, this is way different though than the Mexicat. Yeah. Way over on this side, man. Oh, well, again, that's the thing too. Like, even though it's like Mexicat is using an agave that's common to Ricea, it's outside the region. Whereas this is like in the region, but they're using angustifolia and a little bit of rhodocantha. But so you're getting lots of like sweet, like I get like really sweet, like orange citrus tropical notes, but then also a nice layer of like earthy vegetal character. Yeah, and in the center. Like fresh leaves. Yeah. Like, you know, like avocado leaves and oh. just really really nice wow mm -hmm. this is medicinal man yeah, <laughs> yeah yeah it's medicinal it's not even you know this, some of the, the alcohol is a little bit more prevalent on the nose see i'm not getting a whole lot of alcohol in this one because i'm I'm using a different glass than he yeah. is he's using a Glencairn. what i am getting a lot more of the plant character it's it, mm -hmm. The nose was bright. It just, as soon yeah. as you popped the seal, it just came right up and said hi, you know. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. It's almost a little bit like the Mexicat, but it, it's it's toned up. You know, it's amped mm -hmm. up because, of course, it's at a, at a higher ABV. Mexicat was only 80 proof. And even at 80 proof, it was really lovely. So. Yeah. And down deep, I'm getting, now I'm getting a little bit more of the alcohol. It's opening up. But I'm getting more earthy notes yeah. as well. Yeah. I think as it kind of breathes, you get more of the sort of wood character coming through, um, probably from the cooking process. So yeah, not not smoke really, but like wood, you know. But you know, it's it's using two different versions. It, the first pass is stainless steel. Yeah. The second pass is in copper and wood, and you know that's unusual. Unusual that I that someone would use both methods, but yeah. hey, that's that's yeah. the creativity. That's the hand of the maker at play, you know. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's just beautiful! Wow. <laughs> this is medicinal, man. Whatever mm -hmm. this will cure. This will cure, like you know, bronchitis. Yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah, I know? I just, I just had a thought about like uh using this as like a base for a hot toddy. A little this, a little yeah. lemon juice, a little hot water, just inhale it, let that open up your passageways. Yeah, you know, <laughs> put a towel over your head and let it open yeah. up the pores and stuff and just this is this is the kind that'll get you over the grip. <laughs> <laughs> as the as the British would say, yeah. just try getting over the grip. Um, <laughs> let's taste it. Let's dive yeah. in. And see what we got. Mm. 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 Okay. 
very reminiscent of the Balam. Mm. The mm -hmm. Costa Garcia that we had earlier, if you haven't seen that video, go watch it on our YouTube channel. Alex and I did that. It's, it is at a higher ABV, but it was much more reminiscent of that, much more of the plant. I think I said something like wood, paper, agave paper, plant-like. Yeah. Um, but the nose was completely different. The nose between mm -hmm. these two makers, different, oh. way different. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of a lot of peppery and spice on the on the on the palate on the tongue. Yeah. Instant, instant. Yeah. And then that finish, long, warm, fuzzy, mm -hmm. but 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 very different than a mescal fuzzy. Mm -hmm. it, a mescal sometimes the fuzzies tend to burn a little bit. This one is like a not that way it's it's yeah. more plant-like after you know mm -hmm. then 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 alcohol high and even though this is at a high abv um wow that's that's really different it's similar and not the same yeah mm -hmm. yeah i really like it to me it has this like quality that kind of reminds me of like tapache i think the fermented uh pineapple drink so so there is yeah, there's a drink that that you'll find in mexico where people i think that's what it's called where it's ba basically like juice pineapple and then like they stick the rind into the juice and just let it ferment and so it's you know and you end up with this like you know, three, four, five percent ABV like drink. So it's a little bit sweet, a little bit sour, a little bit earthy. Um, and that's what I'm kind of elements in this that remind me it's like the slight acidity, but sweetness that reminds me of pineapple. OK, um, I'll buy and that. And then there's this greenness that reminds me of like pineapple leaves. So I'm, I'm I don't know. I just, whatever's happening here is channeling pineapple for me. Okay. And all the you know, that's I'll buy that. I I will take it because, you know, uh, the Ricea de Costa that we had. When you read the description of where it's coming from and who the the maker is, and what else he grows, he grows corn on his land as well. And for those of us who have had, you know, Mexican uh, liquors made with Mexican corn, you know that that's very distinctive because it's not like, uh, you know, I, I talked earlier in one of our reviews, we talked about, I talked about Sierra Norte, which was one of the first whiskeys I've ever had where you taste the corn. Yeah. This year, Felipe and I, our, our taster in the UK, someone sent us Porsche, which is a corn you know, a, a, a legacy corn alcohol made in Chiapas. Yeah. And it's just now making the rounds in the United States and in the UK. And it's beautiful. It's so yeah. different from from the from the corn whiskeys because yeah. it's not it's it's not as heavy and yeah. it's not aged. Right. So it's it's more of the fermented corn liquor and it's a completely different animal though. It's very mm -hmm. savory. Reminds me a lot of a pechuga, mm -hmm. you know, um, and some of the other ricias that we had. This is it's almost got that savory. Would you say this one has a savory quality to it? Yeah, yeah, no, it does. It reminds me of like thyme a little bit, you know, the herb and a little, maybe a little touch of not quite oregano, but like there's basil. definitely a, a, yeah, yeah, basil. yeah. Solid savory yeah. character to it, uh, but still there's this like underlying like sweet character that kind of reminds me of like really ripe fruit, you know, whether it's really ripe pineapple or really ripe strawberries, you know, something where it's like super sugary intense, right? Because they're it's at the peak of ripeness. And um, that's mixed in with that savory. So you get this really nice balance going between them. You know, it's interesting that we say uh, ripe fruit because in, in, in Latin American countries, it's not uncommon to leave fruit to ripen. You know, we're so used to getting our stuff green, the green bananas, yeah. green papayas, right. you know, and then you uh, even even green watermelons. Yeah. And then you, you bring them home and you hope that they ripen in a, in a right way. 
And right. sometimes they don't, you know, like in Florida, yeah. you live in Florida, I live in New, in Texas and New Mexico, yeah. where, you know, if you don't catch it at the right moment, it's dead, right? Yeah. So what's interesting is in, in Latin countries, like for instance, I, I visited a, a butterfly um, uh, sanctuary in mm -hmm. Costa Rica. And it's a butterfly and, and uh, hummingbird uh, sanctuary. And Costa Rica is unusual because it's got both different types of forests that meet in the center of the, of the world right there. They meets there. So you have like, uh, I, I, I'm so bad at earth science, assiduous, you have cloud forest and conifer. Okay, so you got yeah. like pine trees on one side of the country mm -hmm. and you've got jungle on the other side and they meet yeah. together in the center. It's kind of like the continental divide, yeah. you know, we've been through to Colorado. So it's similar and different. And what happens is that at that range, that's where these, where migratory animals meet in the center. So if you want to hold a, a huge butterfly or a moth, what they do is they let bananas ripen mm -hmm. overripe. Yeah. And then I, I asked the guy, why the bananas? He goes, well, first of all, he says the insects get drunk on the bananas because they start to they start to ferment. Right. Right. So there's a method to the madness. Yeah. They're, they're letting the fruit rot. And as a, if you're a sommelier, that's what you do. You you smell yeah. overripe fruit. So you have that in your you register that in your head. Well, when you walk through these sanctuaries, and it's a big cage. So you've got yeah. these hummingbirds that are this big buzzing you. Yeah. I don't know what you think, but it sounds it sounds like a missile coming past you. <laughs> All right. And then you have these butterflies that you want to hold and take pictures with and, and they're drunk. So because they're they 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 go for the ripe fruit. That's what yeah. they do. So these these trainers, these guides, they know how to do that. But then at the same point, you start to smell the overripe fruit. It could be bananas, it could bananas are easy because they grow everywhere, right? Yeah. But you're right. This this is almost like a it's just about to turn. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's just about to turn. And then there's there's rotting fruit. That's a whole different smell. Right. Sorry, folks. Whole different right. smell. But this is just where the point where it's overripe and it's beginning to ferment yeah, yeah. in the humidity, in the open air. Yeah. And that's what it is that the that the that the you can see the bugs, they'll land on it and they'll start drinking it. Because mm -hmm. you know it forms a surface of, of booze, so you know so these poor these poor moths and butterflies are you know that you see pictures of they're a little tipsy, so yeah. so it's the tipsy moth. <laughs> <In other words. laughs> but I get it. You I know, understand. Well, I think we're we're not the only species that enjoys alcohol. <laughs> no, of course not. You know, I mean, we don't know. We don't know what what. Uh, you know, trumpet vines and and honeysuckle. What happens? Why a hummingbird goes for it, or a bat for that matter? Yeah. Why does a bat go after? You know, the why is it a pollinator? Well, yeah. maybe it just likes to go out drinking at night. You know, maybe that's what it is. Yeah. We're yeah. not we're, we're not that different. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, but oh. no, this is really lovely. It's lovely, and you know you'll notice that we're we're we stopped talking about cocktails. Yeah, you can mix it in a cocktail, but you know what? What's our price point for this thing? Well, that's an excellent question. Let me see here. This is, this is one that has been on my radar. I have seen it uh, mentioned before. I've never been able to get it. As it opens up some more, I am getting more of the savory qualities that we got in the Balam earlier. And again, if you haven't seen that video, go check it out. Balam Bracia da Costa. Yeah, so for this, we're looking at $96 a bottle. You know what? Worth every penny, though. Yeah. And yeah, I've got, we, we have a vintage that supposedly April from 2015. Yeah. That's this vintage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but that's the other thing, too. I mean, you think about, you know, when you, you have to think about, you know, whether you're buying vodka or bourbon, right? They're producing thousands upon thousands upon thousands of liters, you know, per batch, right? This is less than 700 liters, right? And of this delicious so it, spirit. Batch number four. Right, yeah. I mean, so, I, you know, well worth the price, right? Yes. The amount of labor 
that's gone into this product so like uh lovingly made and by you know these people so it's just i think you know you're going to pay more for really great great spirits when they're made really well and so this is definitely one of them it's worth it uh, eric just i know i've said this before but it seems to me that a goddess spirits at a higher abv and sometimes at lower abvs for me below below 80 proof mm -hmm. um do you find that they're more they're, they're more satisfying? It's the difference between milk chocolate and dark chocolate. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. You something sweet to take the edge off, maybe after dinner or something, uh -huh. and you have a square of chocolate at 75% cacao, and you go, you know yeah. what, I'm good. I got two squares of that. I'm done. Right. Do you find that that's the same thing with, with, with uh, uh, agave spirits and artisanal agave spirits at higher ABVs or even lower? Yeah. Where you go, I need one or two of these and then I'm done. I'm satisfied. Yeah, for sure. And you know, that's, that's true for a lot of things too, right? You buy a higher quality meat, higher quality vegetables, right? That ha are packed full of flavor. You know, you're going to be more satisfied with the, with it in general. So I, the same is true of agave spirits um you know if you have your like average you know tequila you know mixed dough that's just like hey you have a half a gallon of margarita you're like yeah all right maybe i'll have another um but you know with this like you have a little veladora that's you know one of my i love those little yes. glasses crosses on the bottom i like sipping out of those you know at the end of the day kids are asleep <laughs> uh, you know, just, like, just you know have a glass of that and you're just like yep that's good that's all yeah. you need so, it's a great nightcap a great end and a great way to celebrate the end of your day yeah uh, the the Ma maestro raiciero and this one is santiago diaz mm -hmm. uh, Ramos. i think that's the same one as yours is that correct the same gentleman yes yes okay because they have uh three names at the front here uh yeah. and i'm not sure um who these people are right why they're listed on the uh on the label but on the back this particular batch was distilled by santiago diaz ramos mm. and hacienda el divisadero wow that's a mouthful sorry especially <laughs> after some after, especially after some ricea this is just gorgeous again brand of promise nominee from the from the ricea the yeah. costa on that air region I can't say much more. If if you folks have had it, tell us what you think in the in the comments below. If you're watching us on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell because you know, give us a like because it helps the algorithm. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm Mike Morales here in Southern California. That guy out there is Eric Zandona in Crestview, Florida. And you have been watching and listening to Sipping Off the Cuff on Tequila Aficionado Media, all of our channels and networks. Follow Easy Drinking on I, on Instagram. You can follow me at Timber Elk or follow Tequila Aficionado on their official Instagram. And whatever you do, tomar sabiamente. Live wisely.